Okay, that's 20 minutes. Do we have any questions? Oh, looks like we have a question from Kara. You should be able to unmute now. Awesome, thanks. Um, I'm about to grad. Hey, uh, I'm about to graduate college, and I'm starting my writing career. Oh, thank you. And I'm wondering, how would you? What advice would you have for someone just starting um, out after college? Wow. Did you say writing career? Yeah. Writing career. So what kind of writing do you do? I do uh, playwriting and screenwriting. Right, right, right. Oh, wow. See, how exciting. Well, congratulations for about to embark on your writing career. I would say mm, write as much as you can, right? Do you have friends who are writers? Yeah. Oh, great. Okay, good. Hang out with, you know, make sure you you... Keep in touch with your good friends who are also writers, right? Yeah. Write as much as you can. Read as much as you can. You know, um, you know, maybe you can't always afford to go to a play. You don't have time or you have a day job or something like that. But read as many plays as you possibly can. And also, you know, read as many screenplays or, you know, watch as many movies and TV shows if you want to also write for that genre, you know? Just can just ingest a lot of things as much as you can. But the mo more important than taking stuff in is also writing. Write, 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 write as much as you can. Um, and then, you know, hang out and see if you can, I don't know, are you into self-producing or have you done that before, that kind of thing? Yeah, I haven't self-produced anything before, but I'd be really interested in learning how to do it. Uh-huh, uh-huh. Well, you just find a group of people who are, you know, interested in putting on your show. Or maybe you have a collective of people. If you have, again, if you have other, if you have friends who are also writers, playwrights, for example, yeah. I mean, you can easily just put on a show and, and the idea is you do it for, you know, you don't have to spend a lot of money to do it. You know, you can also, these days you can make a film on Zoom, uh, make a, a film, you know, on your phone, you know what I mean? So you can write a script and make it on your phone and then put it online. You know, it's a great way to get your stuff out there. Just keep writing stuff and keep getting it out there. I think that's the most important thing to do, you know. Um, and again, you know, no need to wait for the perfect opportunity to come. Just just think all opportunities are great. I'm just going to just keep doing stuff. Keep putting stuff out there. Keep reading as much as you can and watching stuff if you can. You know, live going to live shows is better, but. If you can't afford that, then reading plays is really great. Yeah. Okay. And keep hanging out and watch me work. We're around. Thanks. Congratulations. Yeah. Congratulations. Thank you. Yay. Thank you so much, Kara. <laughs> Oh, looks like we have a question from Lisa. Uh, hi there. Thank you so much for doing it. This is my very first time, and I'm oh, very wow. excited to be here. So Welcome. thanks, everybody. Um, I wanted to ask you about your revision process mm -hmm. and how, because um, I'm kind of in revision mode right now, and I wanted to find out how you take the feedback you've been given or your own thoughts and start to work towards a new draft. Right, right, right. Yeah, that's good. Cause, cause um, you know, not all notes are, are equally good and helpful, you know, and even sometimes people give us notes that are really good notes, but the way they give them makes them hard to hear and hard to take. Um, sometimes I talk to people who say, wow, wow, you know, they they gave me a great note, but I don't know how to take it because the way they talk to me is really hard. So it makes it hard to hear. So it's a real um, 
it's a whole skill set not exactly an art form but a whole skill set to be able to give people notes and then to be able to take notes so um but basically hopefully you have all the notes you, you're sort of keeping track of the notes whether you take you write them down on your phone like i do sometimes or you write them down in a notebook you know so hopefully you have them kind of all in one place you can see them you know they're not so if you don't if you have like lots of different them in lots of different places put them all in one place right and then read through them more than once and see which ones which ones resonate with you you know like if you have a note like uh well, i don't understand what the character wants for example the main character um you might go well that 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 might resonate with me and you can just circle it and go well that's one i'm going to think about as i rewrite so you pick a couple of notes that might make sense to you and then you can go through your draft reading it aloud are you is it a play or a novel or a film script what kind of what are you rewriting lisa um i'm gonna be the disc staff person here probably i'm doing a collection of short stories great a collection of short stories okay so well a collection of short stories are they linked in character theme or storyline or not um not linked in storyline but linked by character okay so then we would we would look at one at a time right is that does that make sense to you yes it does great okay okay so you would so it, so then i would guess that your notes the notes that you have are are they specific to each story or are they a general kind of global notes for the whole collection um at this point they are they're specific to each story with some side notes going oh i see that this character shows up again here maybe you could highlight the fact that this character is going to show up later or or more along those lines but i'd say more specifically towards each work i'd say great okay okay so great so you have them you have all your notes in one place all the notes are specific to each short story pretty much so th th that's even easier in a way because again you're dealing with a shorter form you know so i'm guessing the notes are how about how many notes? like if you say that you're the first story in the collection about how many notes do you have for that one <laughs> um i've had people who have done line edit notes on the stories so in that case there are quite many and other people who have written uh, you know a generous several paragraphs on the story mm -hmm. i belong to a writing group and people have been very kind and very generous and take a lot of time mm -hmm. um, Great. What their responses? Great. I I believe they're kind and generous. How do you feel about um, all those notes? I feel like I just um, I just put out a new story, and and this is kind of what made me want to ask you about this. But um, the story is written from a five year old's point of view. Mm -hmm. Um. And it's about a five year old and his non gender conforming friend. Mm -hmm. And I wanted to keep it. I was very interested in how the children react to this and or they don't. In most cases, they just ignore it and get on with their lives. And I got several. The, the comment that was interesting to me was, well, who is the story for? And I thought, well, just because it's about children doesn't mean that this is a story for children. The narrator's voice that's in the third person is very much an adult voice uh, commenting on the kids in question. And then I got comments like, well, you don't have any adults in the story. But the point wasn't to have adults in the story. The story was to stay within the world of a five-year-old. Um, or a couple of five-year-olds. Mm -hmm. So I, I read these notes and I just was really puzzling and I know that I've had writing teachers who have said if the note doesn't make sense don't do it um but I'm wondering if a whole bulk of people are making this note maybe it's something I should listen to hmm. yeah yeah and all right and is that the case here a whole bulk of people are making giving you the same note I I'd say for the most part most people said okay yeah who is this for why why would an adult read this why would 
you know, why don't you have any adult interaction? Can't you bring in the adult's point of view in the story? And, but but your your narrator is. Did you say your narr the, yeah the narrator is observing this action. Yes and, yes yes. But that's you said an adult voice. To me, it always felt like an adult voice. It did so, not feel like another kid voice. So that there's your adult. I mean, the watcher. You know, I mean, yeah. There's someone there's someone watching. There's someone narrating who is an adult. So there's your adult. I mean, just it sounds it sounds your your writing group is very helpful and it sounds like uh yeah. So so there's your adult, there's your adult voice. So if you were to answer them, well, well, the adult is my narrator mm -hmm. because it's through the lens of the adult. And the I mean, if you if you want an adult in the story, there they are. They're there. Right. I mean, as I as I, that's how I in my you know non MFA understanding of stories, th there's an adult there. You know, they're just watching. You know what I mean? Like we talk about the male gaze, the female gaze, the black gaze, the white gaze, the whatever non gendered gaze. That that's a gaze. That's a person. That's a somebody who's there narrating. So I think you've accomplished that for your for your note givers, right? And now you can get onto the other notes. Okay. Which are well, yeah. So check which are uh, which, which yeah. So which other ones resonate with you? Because I agree with your, your with I agree with both things. One, if a, if if the notes don't make sense to you, don't take them. If a lot of people are giving you the same note, then maybe you should consider it. Yes and yes. And a lot of times you're already doing what people tell you to do. A lot of times they're not paying attention. And I I think you've got an adult in the story already. Yeah, because, yeah. Okay, so what are some of the other notes? Um, I would say that the most of the notes, it's it's a very short, short story. So it's not a very long story. Um, I would say most of the, almost all of the notes were uh, uh, wanting some sort of adult story. Everybody liked the dialogue, liked, the characters, there are three little kids who are in the story. One of them is kind of a bully. Um, and the other two are friends and uh, or become friends in the course of the story. Mm -hmm. And what I was a lot of it takes place in a, in their kindergarten. What happens um, when one of the characters is given a pair of boxing gloves by his grandmother for his birthday? Mm -hmm. um, he also likes to dance. Mm -hmm. um, so there was a lot of I, I didn't even think about that, you know, it's like uh, mostly because I teach boxing and for my granddaughter's second birthday, I'm giving her a pair of boxing gloves, which seemed so I didn't even think that there was any more context to that other than this little character is given something he wants to share and he wants his mm -hmm. friend to like it as much as he does. So that threw me for a minute, and that was like, whoa, there's something in there that I, I guess I wrote, but I didn't see it. But hold on, but, but the note you were talking about, you said they want more adults in the story, and then you started talking about boxing gloves, so I'm confused. Right. Well, one of the, the, the other, and then you asked me what were some of the other notes you got. So the other note I got was, are you making a comment on gender? And I'm going like, no, I just, the little kid wanted his boxing gloves and he also likes to dance. And that's kind of the point of the story. So that was another thing that came up, which was, I, I guess it was the first time I'd ever gotten a note for something that I didn't realize I'd even written. I, uh, yeah, just the, the vibe of it. I, 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 I would, side with your the i think you said a writing teacher who said don't take notes unless they make sense to you don't take notes unless they resonate with you don't take notes until they resonate with you they might not resonate with you or make sense to you today they might mm -hmm. in a week you know what i mean they might mm -hmm. never um but it, maybe you know 12 people say you know go that way and your gut says eh, i'm writing the story that i need to write you know, I would, I would, I would stick to the story that you, you need to write just 
it's okay. And maybe you're, you're going to see it differently in, in, in a week or two or three or a month. And you can go, oh, of course. Now I see what they're talking about. Of course, I'll do a rewrite, you know? But until then, just hold them. Just, just hold them. That's not like a pushing back or anything. That's just, it needs to, the, the, the note comes from other people, but the doing of the note comes from you. And mm -hmm. until the doing of the note can organically and legitimately come from you, then you're just, uh, you know, following orders. And if you're going to follow orders, you might as well be a robot. You know what I mean? And that's not, that's not writing. That's, that's, you know, marching in step. So you need to come to the place where either you, you come to peace with the fact that you're writing what you're writing and their notes are saying what they're saying, or Oh, I understand their notes, right? I get it. The notes have to come from you. Um, I mean, the, the understanding of the notes because you're the writer. You know what I mean? Mm -hmm. Unless they're going to write it for you. And a lot of people s might see your work and go, well, I would have done it this way. Well, they should go and do it that way then. You know what I mean? I mean, you know, okay. So just wait, why don't you sit with them? Did, when did you get these notes? Um, I got them last week and I got another batch this morning. Okay. Okay. And I, 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 if I may suggest you're, you're, you're too many notes. I love that your, your writing group is so helpful. Whoa. That's a lot of, no, that's a lot of notes, you know, gently, gently slow down the, you know, slow down, slow down. That's a lot of notes. Um, especially the line edits. Is that, you like those kinds of notes? I have, well, I think one of the, with all due respect, one of the people in my group is a much better editor than he is a writer. And I appreciate his insights a great deal because he does point out things from a very mechanical point of view that I either hadn't considered or sort of rushed through. So yeah, in that regard, I do. Do I want them from every single person? No. <laughs> okay. No. Well. I mean, you know, they have the word, you know, they say there's a saying out there, you know, take what you like and leave the rest. And so I think you have to make that determination. I mean, we're at the point where I don't, I'm not familiar enough with your work or, or your group or anything. Um, it sounds like it's a little heavy handed to me, but if you enjoy it, then you should take the notes and see what you can, what, what sense you can make out of them. I just, you know, I, I want you to write the piece that makes sense to you and not a piece that's pleasing to your writing group mm -hmm. that you know what i mean so it's just sit with them you just got them last week you know and then some more this week sit with them and, and and see how they resonate in a couple of weeks time is there a deadline on this do you have to turn no. it any time soon oh well then sit with it and and enjoy just like being in the you know the negative capability being in the mist of not knowing quite what to do that's okay you've done the writing which is the hardest part and now you're going to do the rewriting, which is the next hardest part. And just uh, see what resonates with you, you know? Okay, and, and check back in with us, you know, next week. Maybe you'll have a different take on it. I'm curious to see how it develops. Okay, thank you. I appreciate yeah, thank that. You. Thank you. Thank you, Lisa. Uh, I think we had Laura on deck. Hi, how are you? Hey, Laura, how are you? Good, good. Good to see you. I've been you. having a writer's block. Uh -huh. How do you get out of it? I don't know. Aren't you, but you're, aren't you a comic, Laura? Yes. Don't you do stand-up, Laura? Yeah. Thank you. <laughs> you're welcome. You're welcome. I think, didn't you give me a Buddha, Laura? Yes, I did. <laughs> oh, it's on that shelf back there. I don't know. Cool, if you, cool, anyway, cool. Back there. Okay, okay, okay. So, so you have been having a writer's block. Um, um, do you write sitting down? I, yes, that's, and I write in longhand on, you know, paper on loose leaf paper, which oh, is my, I'm so disorganized. My life is so disorganized. Oh. That's why I'm a comedian. <laughs> Come on, comedians. I, did you ever see, you probably saw that, that, uh, uh, if you haven't check, check it out. The, um. The documentary on Joan Rivers. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay. Well, she. I mean, she's a comedian. She organizes. She, she's organized. She's got. I mean, she is amazing. Amazing how organized she is. Um, um. 
first um well, just a few maybe change it up a little bit you know maybe write uh uh maybe do you write at home from your mm-hmm. home? oh mm-hmm. so maybe try writing i don't know in a coffee shop you know what i mean okay. change it up maybe some people around you know the hub and bub of you know miscellaneous strangers it might be fun you just get you out of the house get you caffeinated or tea or you know hot chocolate or whatever you like you know that could be fun um, so change up your environment a little bit. That might be enjoyable. Also, um, uh, realize uh, that you're a really great hypnotist. I've said this before. You hypnotist, you know, you're hypnotizing yourself all the time. So the words are going out of your mouth into your ears, right? So when you say things like, for example, I am so disorganized. My whole life is so disorganized. You just we, we, we. okay. You might uh, just as an experiment try uh, you know substituting something else. Or when you catch yourself saying that, you might throw in something else that might be more affirming, more uplifting, more helpful in the in the long run. You know, okay. Um, you know, just some 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 you know positive affirmations. Um, um, I know the story I'm trying to write and I work on it every day. It's just something, I mean, I don't know what, but something other than what you just said. Okay. Right. Thanks. Thanks. And, and, you'll, and you'll get to hang out in coffee shops. What could be better? Okay. And see, and then check back in and we'll see how you're doing. Okay. Okay. Great. Okay. Thank but you. Again, you do your daily schedule though, right? Did we t- well, I think we might have talked about it. You Definitely. have a daily schedule. So you, you're, you're touching on it every day which is important. Just change up the location and watch what you're, watch yourself talk. Okay. Thank you. Thank you. Thanks again for the Buddha. (laughs) Thank you. Timothy should be able to unmute. Hello. Hey. Yes, okay. How are you? Hey, how um, are you, Timothy? Good to see you. You too. Uh, I like your shirt. Um, Nick, I know. <laughs> yeah. I'm not a real fan. I'm just a fan of the shirt. That's okay. None of us Nick fans are real fans. Um, <laughs> anywho, um, any tips for trying to finish um, a play script on deadline? Mm, mm, when's the deadline? Tomorrow. <laughs> how many how many pages do you have to left uh i've got about 14 i want to get to 20 mm, so you've got six pages left pretty much yeah and but every time much- i think i figured something out it opens another character door and uh now i'm like oh okay maybe this is it and um so it, it's I'm, I'm i'm just i'm getting concerned that it, we're kind of going like this a little bit so uh-huh uh-huh i understand so so, hmm, so you've got till, is it, can we say end of day tomorrow? Yeah, close. Yeah. No, like 6 p.m. Or are we talking? Like 5 p.m. 5 p.m. Okay. No, yeah. I love to sit like this. Okay. So it's like, <laughs> it's, it's like an hour, it's like a 24 hour. You've got 24 it's hours. Essentially, yes. Yeah. But, but yeah. you're not going to stay up all night, are you? No. What you, great. So how many hours left possibly do you have to work today? Oh, uh, maybe one. It's like when we're off great and okay. then one more it, hour is it okay great and how many hours do you have to work tomorrow probably about mm-hmm. four or five four or five yeah great okay great okay 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 great so you've got one hour after we get off this and then you've got like four or five hours tomorrow great mm-hmm. that's plenty of time and you have like six okay. pages to write yeah great that's plenty of time Okay, so this is what you do. So today, do you have any, um, uh, this is not, this has writing on it, but do you have any index cards? Sure. Or pieces of paper that you can, t- you know, three by yep. fives, right? Yeah. Okay. Do you know, um, do you know where you are in the story of your play? I think so. Yeah. Okay. It's, it's all, yeah. Cause it, well, it's, it's still a first draft. It's all a little gooey at the okay. moment. Um, but I, I, pretty sure I know where we are with the pages that I'm working on. Yeah. Great. Okay. So this is what you do. So you say, 
and you have is it all like one scene yeah the, the, oh, great okay yeah. so so you're gonna use your car use your index cards you mean you need like i don't know six cards okay right because you need six pages so we'll just make okay. it like that okay. okay so on so on each card you're gonna write the next thing that happens in the story okay right so yeah. so you you know where you are right you know and then and then she she walked out of the house and she met larry and larry said you know but um bump 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 the end right mm -hmm, mm -hmm. okay so on card number seven right mm -hmm. you're gonna you know it already you know what card mm -hmm. number seven is because on card number seven you're gonna write the end Okay. I know it's a game. It's a game. We're just gonna play. No, it's game. cool. Uh, okay, this is fun. Okay, so you got six cards for the six pages, and then mm -hmm. the end, right? Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Okay. So you're just gonna write out after we hang up here, or you can even do it while we're talking to other people. Just write out what happens. Okay. And this is what you're gonna do. We're gonna pretend. We're gonna pretend. You're gonna pretend that you know the story. Huh. You're just gonna pretend. Okay. Just pretend. Yeah. Just pretend right okay so you're going to pretend like that. you know the story you're going to write it out and it, it doesn't have to be on six cards but i'm just that's as many as you can use you can't use more than that right okay you're going to pretend that you know the story and then the end and it was really short sentences she did this and then they did that and then they had an argument about the the car and then he threw the knife at her and then she she turned into a unicorn and flew around the room and whatever whatever it is okay that's what you're going to do today Okay. Mm -hmm. Then you're going to start telling yourself, like we do with Laura, I got this. I can mm -hmm. finish this. I know I can do this. All right. Okay. It's going to be a draft. I'm going to turn it in by five o'clock tomorrow. I'm going to push send. I'm going to feel really good about this. You start talking to yourself like that. And then tomorrow, when you get up, you just do the work, just do it as fast as you can yeah. and get it done. And that's, you know, that's professional. You know what I'm saying? Yeah, yeah, exactly. I do. Okay, okay. Yeah. And just know that, like, you're in a, a great club of people who work like that a lot. Okay. I had a feeling it would be a familiar yeah. scenario. So we've all been there. We've so, all been there. Yeah. We've all been yeah. there. And we will be there again. And, you know, we sometimes you just got to, it's like, it's like showtime, baby. You know, it's showtime. <laughs> You know, you got to show up, baby. Right. So you're going to, exactly. you're going to, you're going to let you got today. You're going to lay out your game plan. Mm -hmm. You're going to reinforce it with positive self-talk. You're going to mm -hmm. hypnotize yourself, positive self-talk, only positive self-talk. Mm -hmm. Right. And then mm -hmm. tomorrow you're going to hit it and you're going to write it and you're going to be done. Okay. I love it. Thank you so much. So it's actually much. Just, super it, helpful. Yeah, and it's going to be fun. It's going to be a fun yeah. time. It's great. It's so much fun. Great Fantastic. question, though. That's a really cool question, man. Thanks. Thank you. Thank Thanks you. for the help. Sure thing. Thanks, Timothy. Um, up next, we have Andrew and then... Um, Michael. Michael <laughs> Carol. It's Carol. That's who that is. But who's Andrew? Can... Andrew. We'll take Andrew first. Yeah. Hi. Uh, Hi. Well, we're Andrew and Company. This is a uh, Wayne State Theater and Dance Writing hey. Performance Ensemble. So we're all here. Hey. hey. Oh my goodness! What fun! So we are having lots of fun together. Um, we typically are writing for performance, but we have um, some poets in the group, one of whom does not want to be named. But uh, we're thinking about when we're writing for the page, um, we have a particular way that we write. But then when we think about if we wanted to take that content and move it into performance, um, if you have any thoughts about that, especially when there's no established narrative that goes with the writing. So thinking about taking poetry from the page and putting it more into the performance aspect. Right. Wow. That's a, that sounds like that's a complicated question. Wayne State, man. All the smart, all the smart people up in there. Hey, um, so, um, I would say, uh, so th there are different ways to create, um, 
And just the disclaimer, I didn't go to, you know, are you guys, you were in a white writing for performance program? Are this guys, is yeah. a bachelor for theater program. Okay. Okay. Right on. Cool. 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 Cause I always have a disclaimer. Like I didn't go to grad school so, and I just make shit up. So I'm just making some shit up for you right now. Okay. No offense. No, you know, I hope it didn't offend anybody. Okay. So there are different ways to uh, organize things, right? So so you, uh, I'm sorry, uh, what was your, the woman who spoke to me? Shantae. Uh, I'm saying, say it again. Shantae. Shantae, okay. Shantae, so you, you're talking about like organizational principles. That's what I call them. Narrative is an organizational principle, right? Like what's the story, right? That's an organizational principle. Um, also, if it's poetry, a lot of times I ask myself, like, what's the groove? And and base, I mean, I I basically always write from the groove, even if it's a story or a play or a novel or a song or whatever. It's the groove, which is underneath the narrative, the the story. It's something else. It's rhythm. It's the beat, and that's how I would organize. If I were a a poet writing for the page, and then I was thinking about perhaps doing like a, a spoken word. Is that am I? Is that what you guys are talking about? Or, or Shantae, is that what you're talking about? Uh, it could be that. We're, oh. we're kind of uh, contemplating what it could be and just kind of thinking about all the different possibilities. Mm -hmm. Is it something that will be, correct me if I'm understanding it wrong, something that will be spoken aloud? Yes. Mm -hmm. Great. So, so great. So I would imagine it's going to go through a body. Is that right? Yes. Great. Okay. So, so it's going to live through your body and language, as I've written before, language is a physical act. I would start by just start running it through your body. Okay. A lot of times, some of us, we write up here. Ooh, we're so smart. Oh my God. We're so brilliant. Okay. But language comes through your whole body. So start getting it in your body. Um, start reading it aloud. Okay. Start hearing the rhythms of the words. Start letting it move you. And this is not just for, it, this is all kinds of writing, right? It should move you. It should, it should move you. And if it moves your body, it also might be emotionally moving to the audience. Okay? So, and you don't have to do this in front of people because that could be embarrassing. You could try it like at home in your dorm room or wherever you have some privacy. You could read your work out loud my fam my husband and my son they live here they're used to me moving around like this but maybe that's not cool for you know your context definitely start getting the words in your body start allowing the words to move you um so they don't have to make necessarily story sense but they might start making rhythmic sense Okay, like, I mean, if you've ever read my play Death of the Last Black Man, that is not organized by story, that's organized by groove. Okay, when the guy says, do and diddly dip, did the drop, drop, do it, be dripped it, I say, do, that's not a story, although you can make a story out of it, but it's organized by the groove. Okay, is that helpful? Like, have yeah. fun. We're counting on you all to save us. <laughs> <laughs> Have fun and be brave and courageous and 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 speak your truth and tell the truth and 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 look into the eyes of someone who doesn't look like you and say, hey, we're the same. We're we're one great beautiful being, which amuses itself by making us all look so different. <laughs> you know, you know, yeah. see the unity because it's there. Wayne State. You guys got to come back and hang out with us on a regular basis. <laughs> Will you please? Yes, yep. we'll be back. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you. Any more questions? You. Are y'all cool? Y'all cool? Is that a question for today? Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Blessings. Thank you so much. Thank, Thank you. you. Thank you. <laughs> Thanks so much. Yeah. Please join us again. <laughs> um, all right, Carol. Uh, we have our last couple of minutes uh, for you. Hey, Carol, three minutes, girl. How you doing? Uh oh, unmute yourself. Yeah, Carol, there you go. Oh, great. Hi. Hi. I'm just tech support. Hey, He's tech Michael, support. how are you? It's Live great to see you guys. Support. How are you? Live in tech support, and my thing is freaking me out today. <laughs> oh, it's all right. It happens. So I'm so glad I just got to say hi. And um, 
I guess that's my question is, um, is, is more common. Thank you so much for guiding me through so many years. And uh, I just think of you a lot every time I write. So I wanted to encourage everyone out there to uh, just take some of the advice you're hearing and write away like mad and have fun. And uh, I'm, I seem to be writing poetry these days, a, po a poem a day. We love that. That's love what that. You and are it's, so prolific. And it's so, but it so amazes me because it's as if I don't even feel like I'm writing it. I feel like it's there uh -huh. and I spit it out onto the page and it comes out fully. It's kind of a little scary. Not oh. the poetry, the pro that, that, that it does that. And I was wondering, does this happen to other people? Oh, or yeah. Look, Dana's shaking her head. Dana's like, yeah, look at Dana's raising her hand. Oh, yes, yeah. we've been possessed. <laughs> good because i mean it's a nice feeling it's a, it, I'm, i like it it's great and it's been my process for years but i just was curious to see if that's a normal thing <laughs> i think it's a normal thing or a paranormal thing for a po and, and some and it's what comes out of poetry but when i'm when i'm writing stories or you know or something it's not that same process uh-huh uh-huh cool, cool anyway Anyway, always thank you for your, I come to you and watch you constantly when I can, when my machine does not freak me out. <laughs> yeah. You're amazing. And we've and known you for you. many, many years. Thank yes. you, thank you, Carol. Thank you for being here. <laughs> thank you, Carol. It's great to see you. <laughs> Good to see you too. Um, I think, I think, yeah, we're at six o'clock, um, but we'll be here next week and the week after. So we we'll sure see. Will. <laughs> Thank you all. Thank you. Have a great week, everybody.